So for today's video, I'm gonna talk about, well, I'm just gonna do numbers on uh, two examples of rentals. I'll do one that's like what I was talking about the other day with the graph where you got, how was I talking about it? Zero and, or high and low profit or high and low cash on cash return and uh, bad tenant and good tenant. So I'll do one here that's pretty much high return with a bad tenant or not a bad tenant, just a lower tenant class. And then here's like one with a better tenant and a lower return. I think my graph's all messed up, but you know what I mean? So, um, so this is, I just put area, lower area, usually get lower tenants, higher profit, higher area, better tenant, lower profit, right? And by profit, I mean like cash on cash return. So let's say for the lower priced area, you get a house for 50K and for 50K, let's say, let's do this like uh, you buy it with a mortgage, right? So you would, I touched my mouth, now I got Corona. Don't touch your mouth or your face. 25% um, down, so you're at 12,500. You put down, right? And then, remember, this is just an example. Um, and then taxes on this $50,000 house, let's call them $2,000 a year. Insurance, I don't know, like $500 a year. Rent. So rent in like an area where you can get a $50,000 house, you'd probably be around like eight fifty dollars per month. And then your CapEx, right? So your CapEx, I usually do 3%, management 10%, maintenance 3%, vacancy 3%. And this may be different, right? So 3% of 850, we got $42.50. Your management is gonna be $85. And then 4250, 4250, right? So then you're gonna have your income after expenses, right? So that means your income, and let's just call these your expenses, right? Um, so you're gonna have 850 minus 4250, 4250, 4250, and then minus 850. So then you end up with 600, dollars and 50 cents. Um, also, I didn't mess with the mortgage numbers um, they're both, they're the same in both of my examples. Um, so it's just, it's super high. So it's 5.8% interest, 30 year loan. Um, so let's say your mortgage payment is going to be, how much is it? It doesn't say how much it is. All right. Well, your you're going to subtract your mortgage payment and insurance out of this number, right? So then you end up with $209.13. And that's the actual money that you're going to get off of this rental every month, right? So if you do your cash on cash return, so what you do is you take this 209 and you divide it by the actual cash you've put into this house, right? So then your cash on cash return for this place would be like 20, it's like 20 and some change. So 20 is some change. So that's a pretty good cash on cash return, right? So then for your other house, you're gonna buy that one for 120K. It's in a nicer area, a nicer house. Um, and for that one, you're gonna have to put 30K down, right? That's your 25% down. Your taxes will be a little higher, right? So you're gonna be at 3K a year. Your insurance, let's call it probably, I don't know, $700, right? Because your house is worth more and that's per year. And then your rent is probably going to also be higher. So let's say that in this area, you're going to get like $1,350. And it's like a nice three bed, one bath, maybe two bath with a basement, right? So then your 3% of your $1,350 is going to be $4,005 for your CapEx maintenance and vacancy. Your management is gonna be 135, and that could be lower. Remember, this is just an example. So then your income 
after your expenses, right? So after you take four oh forty forty dollars and fifty cents times three plus one thirty five out of your total rent, you're going to be at one thousand ninety three. And now once you subtract your mortgage and your insurance, you're going to be at $257.09 per month. And this number divided by the 30K you have invested, you end up with like a 10% return on investment, right? So you can tell that your return on investment is much lower, but your house is much nicer. This area will probably be appreciating much higher than the lower end area and will also be less affected by a crazy downturn in the market, right? So um, you pretty much just gotta pick your poison. You want more cash flow, more headaches, or less cash flow, less headaches, right? So that all depends on your investment strategy and what your end goal would be. Um, my strategy up until now was this one, right? My rentals are in Royal Oak. So um, really, really nice area, really, really good tenants. And my profit's still been decent because I bought a lot of my stuff at a decent price um, before the market got super crazy and they appreciate it like crazy, right? So I got awesome cash flow and awesome appreciation. You never want to buy on appreciation. You always want to buy on cash flow. Um, so that's kind of my example. Granted, you can, there's like a million ways to structure these. So like, let's say that you found this house for 50K, but you need to buy it in cash and the house is actually worth like 70K, right? So what you can do, you can use hard money, buy this, uh, buy this, house, let's say you can get a sweet deal on it because the guy just needs to sell it quick, right? So you buy it in cash for 45K, you get an appraisal for it, you cash out, refinance all your money out of it, right? So you get all your $45,000 back or the lender's $45,000 back. I can do another example on that, but, and then essentially what you could do is you could pretty much be in a rental and you would have zero money into it. So your cash flow would be infinity, right? Your rate of return is infinity because you're dividing it by zero because you don't have any money into it, which is sweet. Um, so these are my two examples. Let me know if you have any questions. I can go into the different ways you can buy rentals to actually not have any money into them or little to no money into them. Uh, it all comes down to finding deals, right? If you can find a deal, you can make some crazy stuff happen. And by using, not even using like your own cash, you can use hard money. You just have to bring a certain amount of that money to the closing and then you could get it all back at the end. So um, that's my uh, quick calculation. I have uh, that sheet I sent in the last video. If you didn't get it, let me know. I'll send you my calculation sheet because before I used to do it like this, but now I do it on my calculation sheet. And it's way easier because you just type in one, actually you just pretty much type in the purchase price and your rental income and then the taxes and insurance, right? Because it's always different and you get the outcome. So I hope you uh, enjoyed this video and I hope you learned something. And if you would like me to send you the sheet, I would more than be glad to send it to you. That's not right, but have a great night.